Tom Purvis back with you here on Inside the Vandals. I'm joined now by women's basketball coach John Newley. Coach, thanks for stopping by. Great to be here. Well, how was it to, to beat Seattle U? It felt great. You know, it was a game we had been looking forward to, and I know certainly they had been looking forward to since uh, the final in Vegas. And uh, a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion going into the game, and I thought uh, we did a great job defensively, uh, more than anything, really holding them down. And then I uh, came out with a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion on the offensive end. Were your players more excited than normal? Uh, normal win, was, were they more excited? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you could tell before the game in the locker room, they're getting pumped up and they're doing their little chants and their cheers and whatever was going on. And me and Jordan looked at each other and went, uh, okay, man, I guess I'm ready to go. And uh, they, were. they were. They were really ready to go from uh, right from the start. You guys pulled away in that second half, winning by... 18. Did it surprise you that you guys won by so much, or did the game feel closer than that margin? Did uh, yeah? I just thought we just continued to play well, you know, and uh, really kept the pressure on them. I, we kept getting stops. And we did a good job on the glass, better job than we've done in the past against them. Handled their physical play pretty well, and you know, I just we just kept slowly, you know, drawing it out, drawing it out, drawing it out. So it was no surprise to me. Now another 20 plus point scoring night for Stacy Barr. She scored 20 plus. 10 times this season. When did you realize that she was going to have this type of season, the season she's having? Well, I thought, you know, at the end of last year, she was doing a great job of, of picking her spots. Shot selection has always kind of been an issue with Stacy. So uh, at the end of last year, I thought she was doing a better job with that. Um, coming in this year, when she stayed here over the summer, and I mm -hmm. saw the improvement from last year coming into this year after what she did this summer the work she put in i figured she might have a pretty good year now i gotta ask you she picked up uh her third foul right before the half in that game against seattle you and yet you started her in the second half is that just kind of a testament to the kind of confidence you have in her to be smart and not pick up number four well uh yeah we had a little talk at halftime because you know she got her se second foul with about 20 seconds ago i said you know no foul let's get yeah. a stop you can keep you in she goes oh don't worry no coach i got it and then bam, foul. <laughs> I thought, hmm, well, I don't know about this, but uh, you know, she, she's a smart player and she, and she knows that, that that wasn't the smartest play in the world, getting that third foul, but I know she can play with foul trouble. Now, if someone would have told you before the season began that you would sweep the first half of the WAC schedule, eight and no, you would have said, what? I said, uh, that's my plan. <laughs> you know, um, you, you always think you're gonna go in and do that. And uh, you know, I think, Coming in, if we could play well and stay focused is always the key. Uh, you never know how you're going to play on the road. I think we, we've developed a good road mentality right now. But, you know, knock on wood, Tom, it's, it's a long way to go. That's, like you said, that's just the first round, man. There's, there's eight more games to go before we get to Las Vegas. Now you talk about the road. Uh, coming up, you guys turn around and have a couple of tough road games this week. New Mexico State, uh, UTPA, teams you've already beaten. But oftentimes, it can be a totally different team on their home floor. How much tougher do you expect these teams to be on their home floor? Oh, I know for a fact New Mexico State is night and day on the road and uh, going uh, playing at home. I think they just got their first road win this weekend at Utah Valley in, in overtime. Uh, but at home, man, they are they are tough. They, they play extremely well at home. They shoot the ball extremely well. And I know uh, Pan Am w is the same. You know, they, they played us as tough as any team here at home, um, along with Grand Canyon. So going in there, it's, it's going to be a big environment. They, have, they do have really good crowd support, and um, you know, they're well coached. It's going to be a rough road trip. Now, New Mexico State, uh, a couple weeks ago, they put up 106, hit 15 threes at home. When you saw that, did that concern you at all? Oh, it concerns me a lot. <laughs> Not just a little, man. As I said, they can really shoot it at home. And, you know, the Abby Scott had 11 of those threes. Uh, they'll launch it from everywhere, and, the, and they, can, they can really shoot at home, especially. And that's, that's a big concern of ours. The, defensively, we're really going to have to get out and guard them. Now, is this the toughest road trip in conference, or is there even a, a difference between given road trips based on opponents or locations? I think going in, we thought that this would be the toughest road trip just because uh, we know New how New Mexico State plays at home, you know, familiar with them. I know how Pan Am is at home. So I think even as we looked at the schedule, uh, I kind of circled this one as, as the roughest road trip. So uh, we're going to have to bring it, man. We're going to have to bring it both nights. Now, looking back through your years of coaching, you've competed in a lot of different uh, venues. What makes a road game tough? Is it is it the venue, the opponent, or a variety of things? I think it's that combination. Uh, the venue can uh, 
you know, can really alter the way you play, the way you shoot the basketball. Sometimes it's a lot of it's a background environment, I, I feel like, shooting-wise. But then you have your, your tough uh, road games that where the crowd's really hostile. You know, I think about the Louisiana Tech games and going over to Fresno and, and places like that. And I think New Mexico State, they just play so good at home. I think Pan Am's going to be a crowd environment where I heard they really get on you. The students really come out. Mm. you know, uh, unlike ours, and uh, really come out and, and make it tough for the team to, you know, to play, for the road team to play. Now, midway through conference play, you know, what do you hope to see in the second half of the season? Do you have any goals or things you want to see your team still improve in? Yeah, we just got to keep getting better. I think we got to still rebound the basketball better. I believe we can take care of the basketball better. Um, you know, our shot selection can continue to improve. And um, like I said, I, I'd really like to see us keep defending the way we've been defending. Uh, and really keep people off the foul line because right now I think we're we're committing a lot of unnecessary fouls mm -hmm. um, and gets them into one and one a little too quick. How does it change playing these teams a second time around? Well, everybody knows everybody now. You know, you're not sneaking up on anybody. Um, you know, the target's on our back now, not Seattle's, uh, as it was during the first round. And we're going to talk to the team today about that, that, you know, everyone's after us now. Um, there's no surprise. So it's going to be a matter of which team can out execute that team I think there's going to be we're going to know what they're doing they're going to know what we're doing man and it's just going to be a matter of getting out and, uh, and seeing how it rolls you know coach in the game against Grand Canyon uh, and we'll wrap it up here the official number of attendance was was 630 not bad but if you guys win both of these road games come back 10 and 0 or even if you don't there better be at least a thousand fans in the Cowan spectrum here you agree oh, oh I agree believe me <laughs> yeah I would love to see uh, see our fans really come out and start start back in our team you know I think we're playing an exciting brand of basketball Very I think exciting. you know I always said if you come once you, you'll come back again to watch us play it's just I apparently that initially getting them to watch the first time is uh, <laughs> has been a problem so hopefully they'll come out and uh, give us that support that our our uh, players really want you know they really love it when we get a good crowd here and they're very supportive of, of, of that well, you heard Coach Newley. Vandal fans, come out and support this team. This is a great team. Coach, congratu congratulations on the 8-0 start, and uh, thanks again for your time. All right, thanks, Tom. Coming up next, Michaela Dirks on Stacy Barr's incredible season thus far. We have that for you now. Stacy, that last game makes eight in a row. It seems like the good times just keep coming. Were you surprised with how easily you handled Seattle U after so many close games last season? Uh, I wouldn't say it was an easy game. I mean... Even when we were up by 20, I looked at the scoreboard and it still felt like it was really close. Like they played a really close game. They were really tough, always pressuring us. So it never really felt like it was an easy game or that we had a massive lead, even though 20 points is kind of a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like you're pretty much used to it now. And it seems, you know, you're probably the team with the target on your back. How are you and the team handling this? I mean, I think we just go out every single game and play the same way as if it's, you know, a championship match. And we have to keep that mentality and not worry about the fact that we're 8-0. It's an awesome achievement for us and the, the whole program. But, um, yeah, we definitely just have to play each game the same. With your family being in Australia, how does your mom keep up? How does she keep tabs on you with everything that's been happening? Uh, mom likes to follow on the Internet. She watches all the home games and all the away games whenever she can and always posting on Facebook. She'll be the first person to wish us good luck because it's so early over there, but always keeping up like that. I think my whole family gets to watch, so it's nice. And I'm sure she, she watches Inside the Vandals too? She does, so I should say hi, Mom, <laughs> Dad, family. <laughs> well, with eight wins in a row, you're undefeated. What makes this team so special? Uh, I think just chemistry. I mean, everybody gets along. We haven't had any problems so far this season, so that really helps out off-court chemistry, really helps out on-court chemistry. All right, well, thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you. From Inside the Vandals, I'm Michaela Dirks. Back to you. It's been a great, great run for the women, and now the question is, can the men get back on the right foot? And it's going to be somewhat of a David versus Goliath as they take on the Giants against New Mexico State. Well, let's hope they can get it done. And thanks once again for joining us on Inside the Vandals. We'll be back here again next week. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week when Inside the Idaho Vandals returns. <laughs>